What's up everybody, it's John from Optech coming at you today with an awesome video bringing you my best $450 gaming PC build. The theme of today's video, if you haven't looked at the title, is a console killing PC. So I do realize that once you include peripherals, the monitor, the operating system is gonna come in a bit over 450, so that's obviously more than the PS4 Pro at $400, but that's not really what this video is about because you never see those videos that's kill your PC and you get a console, and that's because the PC has a lot of versatility, has lots of uses, more so than you get with a console. Well, enough qualifications for this video. Let's get right into this. First, let me give you the expected performance out of this gaming PC, and then I'll jump right into the part selection. So for something like Doom on Ultra Vulcan at 1080p Ultra settings, you will be getting well over 100 frames per second. CSGO 1080p max settings well over 200 frames per second. Same story with a very non-demanding game like League of Legends over 200 frames per second. And on Overwatch with ultra settings at 1080p over 100 frames per second. In Battlefield 1 ultra 1080p 70 frames per second in the campaign. And in the multiplayer mode around 60 FPS. In Batman Arkham Knight at 1080p high settings no game works over 80 frames per second. And in Star Wars Battlefront on ultra. 70 FPS, and in Rise of the Tomb Raider, very high settings around 65 frames per second. So it's gonna be no surprise that this gaming PC is also gonna be capable of playing those popular AAA titles at that 1440p resolution if you do have a monitor that supports Quad HD. So for HD, Full HD, and QHD, this setup has you covered. You may have to turn the settings down a little bit for 1440p, but then again on the PS4 Pro, <laughs> my cat, he's like, a, he's like a Navy SEAL. Look at this, that's crazy, I've never seen him do that. Okay, well, let's get back to this video, guys. So with that little interruption out of the way, let's jump right into the part selection. Up first, for the processor, that is the theme of today's build from Intel. Their new seventh generation processor, KB Lake, is now out with the Pentium G4560. So in the past, you may have seen a video I did almost a year and a half ago for a $300 build using the Pentium G3258. And that being a pure dual core, you know how the story played out with that. It's just gonna have a lot of limitations, not really allow for that full utilization of the rest of the hardware, being that most games are expecting four or more threads now. And that's where this KB Lake Pentium G4560 this is a dual core clocked at 3.5 gigahertz, but it also has hyper threading giving you four threads. And better than that is the suggested retail price is just $64. So you can probably pick this processor up for around $75 or below. So I'll be sure to leave a link in the description box down below for that part, as well as the remaining part selection in this video. And moving on to that motherboard, on the socket LGA 1151, we have a really cool looking motherboard from MSI with a black and red color scheme of the micro ATX variety, setting you back just $50. This is the H110M gaming motherboard and has everything you really want out of a motherboard, plenty of IO with connectivity essentials like USB 3, Ethernet LAN, USB 2, HDMI ports, and easy to use BIOS, isolated audio circuitry, and decent capacitors, good enough to hopefully avoid purchasing a sound card if you're not too picky. And of course it does have front USB 3.0 headers and four six gigabit per second SATA ports. So you might be asking yourself, but this is a KB Lake build. Why are you recommending something that's for six generation processors? Well, they're both the LGA 1151 socket. So the only caveat to getting this board, I wanted to save money uh, to allocate to other parts in this lineup, is you're gonna need a Skylake processor to enter BIOS to download the updated BIOS for KB Lake to run. But MSI has been very clear, as well as other motherboard manufacturers like ASUS, that their older 100 series boards are gonna have support for KB Lake processors. You just need to download the updated BIOS. So that's a little bit of a drawback. So if you don't have a friend with a Skylake processor or you're not going with one of those fancy ASUS boards where you don't even need a processor to boot into BIOS. So I am gonna leave another motherboard option down below, a 200 series B250 motherboard in the description box down below for you guys to check out if that's not a viable option for you. And there are a little bit of benefits going for the 200 series more PCI Express lanes, and the max supported memory frequency does go up from 2133 megahertz to 2400 megahertz. Does make a little bit of gain in FPS, so you know, wouldn't fault you for spending an extra 30 or so dollars 
for the 200 series motherboard. So let's move on now to random access memory. And I found a really cool kit of RAM, red heat spreaders, the Patriot Viper, two four gigabytes sticks for a total of eight gigabytes in dual channel memory frequency of 3000 megahertz for just $54. So like I was saying, the red and black aesthetic on the heat spreaders match well with the motherboard's color scheme. Timings are decent for minimal latency and the speed is obviously well beyond the memory frequency limit of the motherboard that we chose. So you won't be utilizing the full potential for now. However, the price is comparable to slower kits. So if you did want to save money and just get a 2133 megahertz kit, I'll leave a link in the description down below for that. It's only about a $5 price difference. So I thought I'd add a little value to your whole PC and give you a kit that you could potentially use for another PC build. Or if you did upgrade at some time, hey, it's nice to have a little bit of memory frequency headroom. And let's move it on along now to the most important component of a gaming PC, in my opinion, and that's obviously the graphics card. And that's where we wanna put the most money. We want the graphics card to pack the most punch in a gaming PC build. And you might've guessed it, I went with one from Team Red AMD. That's just a killer sweet spot for that value play. This one from Asus, the RX 474 gigabyte graphics card comes overclocked out of the box at 12, 70 megahertz and it will set you back $185 although there is a $20 mail-in rebate for those of you that are extra savvy effectively knocking this down to $165. So I've covered this graphics card on the channel before you've probably seen it covered elsewhere as being the best bang for the buck graphics card getting you that 1080p gaming like I was saying in the beginning of this video and also letting you dip your toe in the water for 1440p gaming because it's kind of overlooked it crushes 1080p but also if you don't mind tweaking the settings a little bit 1440p is also a viable option with this graphics card and at just 165 if you do use that mail-in rebate that is a hell of a deal and Asus has really reliable manufacturing process that's 100% machine automated so there's going to be no issues with quality control 24-7 customer support and a three year warranty on this card. Not to mention it has a really nice aesthetic and a little personalization allowed with the Aura RGB lighting and also utilizes that aerospace grade super alloy components for the utmost quality. And moving it along now to storage, I just went with what's tried and true, the go-to for the best dollar to gigabyte, best dollar to storage capacity and a mechanical hard drive. This one from Western Digital, the Caviar Blue, one terabyte, 7,200 RPM mechanical hard drive. Did I already say mechanical hard drive? Well, that's what we're going with. You get one terabyte, so plenty of room to store all your movies, games, music, and much more. But I do have to mention, if you're one of those that gets by on much less than one terabyte, well, the prices of solid state drives are coming down quite a bit. So this isn't going to, you know, give you a boost in frames per second or that gaming performance, but rather give you a much snappier responsive system, minimizing those load weight and boot times if you go for a solid state drive. So I'm going to leave an option for that down below, a 120 gigabyte SSD from PNY as well as a 240 gigabyte SSD from PNY that are very competitively priced right now, comparable to the high or end of the consumer SSD market in that two and a half inch form factor with really fast sequential read and write speeds. So moving it along now to the case, I wanted something that does sort of pay tribute to that console form factor. So this isn't, you know, gonna be as small as uh, say an Xbox One or PS4 Pro, but this isn't too big at all, would fit very nicely on a desk, below a desk. People would not, you know, be like, oh my God, what's that huge thing that you have, a freaking refrigerator on your desk or below your desk. And also this looks really cool, doesn't break the bank at just $45, has a side window. Let me tell you what it is, the Rosewell Tiffering, Tiffering, I can never say it, Norse mythology for the win though. So it really is quite an exceptional and premium build from Rosewell, especially when you consider the price of just $45. It also comes with two pre-installed 120 millimeter fans, one in the front, one in the back for very awesome airflow and also front IO as you would expect, USB 3, USB 2, audio connections with toolless 3.5 inch device installation and that included dust filter on the bottom keeping your components fresh. And there's also adequate room inside for upgrades in the future and plenty of room to be tidy with that cable management. And last but not least, what's gonna be powering this system from EVGA, the 500 watt bronze certified power supply for just $40 on Amazon right now. So I recommend this power supply 
quite often because it is a really great value getting you quality power up to 85% efficiency under typical load. And having personally used this in four builds of mine now, never a single issue, always happy with the reliability and cost effectiveness, silent operation, the sleeved cables, three year warranty, not a purchase that I've ever looked back on. Being that the entire system is not expected to pull over 200 watts at gaming load, wouldn't fault you if you wanted to go with something even more budget friendly, maybe a 430, 400 watt power supply from EVGA or another reliable manufacturer. Well, that's it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this $450 gaming PC build. I was really excited when I saw the Pentium G4560 release. Such a great alternative to something like the Skylake i3-6100 that became so popular for budget builds. But at $120 for that i3, ah, this is a little too much in some builds. That said, Zen, just around the corner from AMD. If you're not in a huge hurry, I probably would wait a bit, see what AMD has to offer. Well, that's all I got, guys. You know what's up. Thumbs up if you like this video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, Awe of Tech. What are you waiting for, guys? Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Peace, guys.